Hi, I'm Gary Bembridge and this is another of my tips for travellers. I'm going to talk about things that I really think you need to know if you're thinking of cruising with celebrity, who they are, what's included and not included in the fare and some things to watch out for. Celebrity cruises offers a fairly traditional cruising experience. So the format and the structure is very similar to other premium cruise lines. However, it's done with a more modern, a more vibrant, a more upbeat twist and angle to it. The ships themselves are very beautiful, they're very design focused and they are contemporary and modern, certainly compared to the other premium cruise lines. So if you're the sort of cruiser that is looking for a premium cruise line, you like it for a traditional cruising experience, you're not looking for a resort ship, you're not looking for lots of gimmicks, Celebrity is definitely one to consider. It on average has a slightly younger cruiser profile than the other premium cruise lines. So design and the look and feel of the ships I think is different and varied to the other premium cruise lines. So it's definitely giving you something different. And they're constantly evolving that and moving that forward. So on edge, you've got the more innovations with the whole different way of configuring the balconies with your infinite verandas, which make your cabin bigger. One of the things I've found is a huge amount of passion for celebrity. So people who like celebrity really love celebrity and are very, very loyal to that whole experience. And if you want a more upbeat, a more vibrant way of cruising, uh, within a premium experience and a big ship experience, definitely take a look at Celebrity. One of the key things when you're cruising is understanding what is and isn't included in your fare, so what you're going to be paying extra for. Celebrity is very similar to the other premium cruise lines and there are quite a few extras above your basic fare. So let's take a look at first of all what is included in the fare and then I'll talk about what's not included. First of all, of course, your accommodation is included and there's a wide range of accommodation from inside cabins right up through to palatial suites. Now, in terms of dining, there is quite a lot of food included, so you don't have to go to any of the specialty dining restaurants. In the main dining room or dining rooms, in the case of Edge, you have early or late sitting, or of course, you can have select dining where you can either just pitch up or you can actually book on the app or on the day by phoning up the booking desk and choosing a time and combination of table. In terms of dining, if you're traveling in the Aqua Spa, you have the Blue Restaurant, which is dedicated for you. And if you're traveling in a suite, you have a dedicated restaurant, which is called Luminaire. The Ocean View Cafe, which I really like, has a great range of food. And there's a couple of other more informal dining places. So for example, on the Celebrity Equinox, you had the Master Grill, which it would serve things like burgers, hot dogs, kind of more informal food. And of course you have room service. So quite a wide range of included dining options. Of course, you then also have access to all the facilities across the ship. So you have all the usual things that you would expect. You have a wide range of bars and lounges. You have access to the main theater where you have the different production shows. On most of the ships, you also have Celebrity Central, which is where they show movies. They'll do a lot of the talks or they have various demonstrations or activities taking place in there. You have a very large casino. Higher up on the ship, you also have the pool deck. So you have outdoor pools and you also have indoor pools. And of course you have hot tubs. The ships will also have areas to exercise. So you'll have a running or walking track. You then have spaces to play things like table tennis, basketball. There's a fitness center. It's a very large fitness center. And one of the things you'll notice is the fitness center is always very busy because again, passengers on board Celebrity do tend to be much more active, much more youthful and much more energetic. A number of the ships then have one of their signatures, which is the Lawn Club, which is half an acre of actual physical lawn on the top of the ship's great space to go and hang out, have picnics. If you are traveling with kids, there are kids clubs. There's three kids clubs, one for three to five, one for six to eight, and one for nine to 11. The kids clubs are including the fare. If you want babysitting, however, that is an extra cost. You also have all the celebrity life activity, the various programs and activities that are happening around the ship through the day and into the evening. Like the other premium cruise lines, there is quite a lot of on cost that if you're going on a celebrity cruise. Now, of course, a lot of those are determined by your lifestyle, how much you drink, whether you want to do specialty dining, how many excursions you do. There are quite a lot of potential on costs to your experience. Many of those you can pre-book. So before I came on the cruise, I used the cruise personalizer and I had chosen and paid for a lot of those in advance. So the good news about that is they'll often give you various discounts by doing that in advance and you can plan out your whole experience before. So that's definitely something worth looking at. Bearing that in mind though is when you get on board on embarkation day, there will also be a lot of offers. So if you're not sure about what to do, look out for those offers on embarkation day because you can potentially save a lot of money 
what are the extra costs? What are you going to have to pay extra for above your fare? The first of which are gratuities. These are not included within the fare and they are an extra cost. You can either prepay them or they're added onto your CPASS account. And these at the time of recording were $14.50 per day per passenger, $15 if you're in concierge class and aqua class, and in suite, $18 per person per day. Special dining is an extra cost. And they did also offer packages for specialty dining. The discounts if you buy one of the packages for specialty dining range from about 20% if you're buying a combination of three up to about 30-40% if you're buying bigger combinations. To give you a sense of what specialty dining costs, let me give you what I paid on the Equinox. The Sushi on 5 was completely out of cart, so you paid based on how much you had, but that ended up costing around about $35. Tuscan Grill, which was the steakhouse, that was $45 per person. Burano, which was the French restaurant, was about $50 per person. Silk Harvest, the Asian Fusion, was $35. And the various fees are of a similar level across all of the different classes of ships. One of the most talked about specialty dining innovations is Eden on the new Edge class, which is this more interactive, immersive, slightly unusual dining experience with performers that interact and move about the space as you're dining. Drinks will cost you extra. So whilst you get some limited drinks, tea, coffee, water in the main dining room in the ocean view, your alcoholic drinks, your sodas are extra costs. So you can either buy those ad hoc or what is, appears to be very popular are drinks packages and they have a number of drinks packages. You have the standard package which is $45 per person per day. That includes basically house spirits, house liqueurs, a small range of wine, beers, and fountain sodas. The classic package, which is about $55 per person per day at the time of recording, this offers a bigger range of drinks and you'll have much more branded products within here, wider range of beers, wider range of wines, basically a wider range. And then you have the premium package and that costs $69 per person per day. And that pretty much includes everything that you could possibly want. A simple way of looking at it is the classic package, any drink that's gonna cost you up to $9 is included in the classic package, and any drink that's gonna cost you up to $15 is included in the premium package. They also then have bottled water packages and soda-only packages, and also they have non-alcoholic versions of all of the packages, which for me, as someone who doesn't drink alcohol, that was a great option to actually have a drinks package that didn't mean I was paying for alcohol that I wasn't gonna drink. If you want premium teas and coffees, that's also an extra charge, but they are included within the different drinks packages. Shore excursions are extra as they are on other premium cruise lines, and they have a wide range of excursions. I thought the excursions were pretty parity in terms of pricing versus other lines. Bear in mind, of course, that excursions could add quite a significant amount to the cost of your cruising. If you're going out on an excursion every day, which is gonna cost you between 50 and $100 per person, that does mount up quite a lot. Wi-Fi is also extra, and Wi-Fi is relatively costly. They have different packages. So I, for example, bought the one device logged on at a time for the whole cruise, and that cost around about $35 a day for one device, and they have various combinations. They also have slightly cheaper packages if you just want a very simple browsing experience where you're basically just checking email and a little bit of social media. Of course, as you'd expect, then there's all the discretion you spend, so your gambling, your bingo, your spa treatment, and laundry. All those kind of things, of course, are extra. If you enjoyed this video, I'd love it if you watched many more of my Tips for Travelers videos. They're designed to help you make more of your very precious travel time and money on both land, sea, and on rivers.